Hey y'all, welcome back. It's another episode of Airgasm Media and it's Women History Month, so I had to bring the girls out. And today I got my favorite girl, Crystal the <laughs> Gay. Yeah. <laughs> this is my girl. We go way back. We went to ele uh, elementary. We went to middle school. Middle school, yes. bro. Middle school Shout out to Miranda Ray. Shout out to Miranda Ray Middle School. Okay. It brought some, it brought some creatives. Okay? Yes. Oh, for okay. sure. For sure. For sure. But you've been doing a lot of great things here in LA. Not just LA, but like all over. But you've been doing a lot of great things. You recently did the pre BT party for the NAACP Awards. Yeah. You did Rolling Loud. Yeah. Like, you know, okay. All the weekend. It. Oh, my God. I know. Like, I know that's tiring. Yeah. I Actually, like that weekend, it was BET and then another gig after that. And then Saturday I had two gigs that day. And then Sunday I had Rolling Loud, another gig, and then back Rolling Loud. Crazy. I always <laughs> see you post your weekend. Like, girl. Girl. <laughs> how do you do? People be like, how do you sleep? When do you sleep? I, do, I sleep. It'd it be Monday. So if you're calling me, don't expect the call back. Don't I'm call not her calling on Monday. She sleep. And I, I feel that. I Monday's feel a that. Dark day. Not only that, but you're you're making your brand bigger on TikTok. You got six point, uh, six four point eight followers on TikTok. Well, last night, Nope. You jumped up? You jumped up? Yep. You jumped up? Okay. <laughs> every okay. time I go live, like, that shit, like, skyrockets. I get, like, a thousand every time I go live. I love that for yeah. you. And you've gone viral for your, like, different mashups. They're lovely. I love them. Thank They're you. turned up, okay? <laughs> now, there's been lots of talks about, like, TikTok being banned and stuff, but we're not going to focus on the negative. But I want you to shed light on how, like, TikTok has helped expand your brand as a DJ yeah. and brought you more audience and followers. Um, yeah, TikTok is actually where I first went viral. Like, my first viral vi video got, like, 4 million views. Um, and I was like, oh, shit. And then it opened so many doors for me. So I was like, oh, damn. But what happened with that, like, people started saying, like, oh, mix this and this. I don't like being told what to do like that. Like, I will say the recipe is to follow that because it's going to continue your virality. Yeah. But I didn't. But I did another mashup that went extremely viral. It became um, the Ride It Challenge. Um, and that challenge has over 200 million views. Yeah, that, has, that show has over 200 million views. Yeah. And, um, like, a radio, like, a couple radio stations hit me up to, like, make me clean it up. Mm -hmm. I never did. I'm, I need to get on my shit. Like, but... <laughs> I don't like, I need to get my shit. But um, radio stations have hit me up to like yeah. uh, give it to them. Someone asked to buy it for me. I'm like, I can't sell it. Like, that's not my song. Yeah. I'm a DJ. Like, it's to be, it's Uncle Luke's song and DJ Jam. Shout out to DJ, DJ Jam in Miami. Um, yeah, but TikTok has definitely opened um, doors for me regarding like even just being exposed to people that are not just like friends, family. Like, Instagram is very much like people that know you yeah. type shit. Of course, it grows beyond that, but I feel like TikTok is such a like, green area where it's just like these people don't know who you are but they're rocking with you because of what you're doing yeah rather than like the relationship they have with you so i appreciate that they're not like judging me like oh she's too good for this or yeah, she's doing this. Yeah. like you know so i like that i can go into tiktok and be like just be myself i can show how interested i am into like anime or like harry potter or whatever or even just doing like random matches like i put like sade and like a case you're not be together now that's going up yeah. so i'm just like okay like it's really cool, you know? Yeah. yeah, and I also love how you have started gaming on Twitch and stuff. So mm -hmm. with Twitch, do you, like, play, like, music and stuff in the background or, like, sometimes, introduce music? Sometimes. Um, it depends. Like, if I introduce some music, it'll be songs that people already sent me. But my Twitch, I try not to do too much musical stuff. I try to keep things separate because um, Twitch does the, like, DMCA copyright laws to where it's, like, yeah, you can play it live. But when it's like playback, it's muted. Yeah. So anything that I'm saying, if I'm commentating or anything, like they're not they gonna hear it. So yeah. I'm like, all right, what's the point of doing it? Um, YouTube, like they sometimes like mute things, but I'm, they're getting better. Yeah. Instagram, Instagram, my God, like they're so they're they so gotta behind. Catch up. Like they gotta catch up. <laughs> like I can't go live on Instagram yeah. at all unless it's like just an IRL, like in real life stream. If you don't know what IRL is. Um, yeah, if I go IRL on Instagram, that's the only time I can do that. But Twi or TikTok is the only place I can play music without yeah. having no issues. But Twitch is really awesome because that's a whole other um, yeah. realm of people that no have no idea who you are. They're just rocking with you because you like playing video games or you look cute. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. It. And now you're also working with Coke Studios. I've been seeing you post a lot of our favorite LA rappers in the <laughs> studio and whatnot. Now, can you kind of give us the insight of what you're cooking up over there? So, um, basically, Coke, um, so I DJed for them on my birthday, actually, last year. And they were like, are you guys sure she wants to DJ on her birthday? 
One thing about me, you're going to learn, I'm about my money. That's okay? <laughs> so, yes, it's my birthday. Yes, I was having a party that night. Um, but just, like, going over there and establishing a relationship was really my entire point. Yes, they were paying me, but I was like, nah, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. It's Coca-Cola. Yeah. So I go there, I rock it out, and then they gave me this opportunity where it's like, hey, like, we have this studio. We want artists in here. Um, and I was like, well, shoot, I'm pretty plugged. It's like, yeah. what's up? So with that, um, <clears throat> I just bring artists in. They record. Coke doesn't even keep any of the songs as far as, like, um, royalties and stuff like that goes like they let them just record they want the footage and then that footage gets shown to the executives of coca-cola those executives show it to their partners like wingstop jack in the box stuff yeah. like that so i know one guy um i didn't bring him in there specifically but i know one guy in there he ended up getting a deal either with jack in the box based off of his coke session wow so and even i did a session with my girl dj honeybee shout out to her um, we did a session together, and so that session was written up and shown to the executives. And they're like, Crystal, what's up? Like, yeah. now I'm about to bring you back up in. Yeah. Like, so it's just really like, for me, I just want to be able to bring um, the people that I know into another space that they may have not had the opportunity to already have. Yeah. Um, just, you know, just, and it's all free. Like, yeah. you know, so like, let's just, let's make it make sense. You know, at the end of the day, like, I'm not asking for anything from it. Coke's not asking for anything from it. So it's just like, I just want to be able to set people up for success type yeah. shit. Yeah, and, and that shows how pivotal DJs are to like artists, especially up and coming artists, because you're placing them in a room that they may not have been in or like, you know, may not have thought they would be able to be in. Mm -hmm. So that's really good. Um, you also tweeted about how you, you're a young DJ. Mm -hmm. You How you bridge the gap between young DJs and older DJs and showing them who's relevant mm -hmm. in, in the up and coming world. And why, why is that important? It's important because eventually you start to get aged out. Um, you start to not care too much. Like all of us are saying it like hip hop sucks these days, but it's honestly a matter of really digging. Yeah. You know, there's so much being released every single day. There's so many different platforms that you see um, so it's a matter of like, okay, like who's listening to this? I'm the person, like I'm on TikTok heavy, you feel me? So I'm looking at what these younger people are like listening to, what they're rocking with or whatever. Whereas like I know older DJs, they're great at what they're doing, but they're not tapped in with the youth. Yeah. So I'm literally like just the medium, you feel me? Like the younger kids, fuck with me. I could cuss? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the younger kids, they fuck with me. So, like, they're putting me onto their stuff. And then I'm like, all right, like, artistic. Like, DJ Artistic, that's my guy. Shout out to um, DJ Artistic. Shout out to DJ Artistic. Like, he's literally, like, amazing. Um, but I've put him on a couple songs. Like, Go Leaky Song, I put him onto that song. Um, and he's been playing it. Even Soak City. Like, I know some people, like, said, Crystal, you're the one that put me on the Soak City. Yeah. Um, I was like, damn, for real? Like, well, shit, that shit's viral on TikTok. Yeah. Like, what you mean? Like, but, I mean, honestly, just being able to be that person that's, I guess, doing the resource, yeah. research, even though I'm just scrolling, like, you feel me, just peeping shit, but, like, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is a great song. I'm going to add it into my playlist. Then they hear it. Or even if I'm at their set, I'm like, yo, like, this song right here, even though I don't be doing requests like that because I hate requests, too. Yeah. But I'm like, nah, I'm going to put you on, though. Play it, then it goes up, and then it's like that. So I like being that person that's, like, kind of the, like, middleman, like, yeah. for the older generation and the younger generation. Like, I'm not extremely, I'm not 18 or anything yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. you know, but, like, so being able to be tapped in with the youth like that is, I think it's very helpful to just music now and getting them like a little bit more recognition. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you out here <laughs> giving open the doors for you people. Know, I love that for you. <laughs> Speaking of the DJ community, you mm -hmm. started like gathering the female DJs, going to different outings, having yeah. special events for them, and like really gaining, gathering a community with the female DJs. Mm -hmm. You know, why is that important for the ladies to come together, especially like in the DJ world? Um, I think it's important for the ladies to come together because at one point or at some point or any point we're all gonna go through very similar issues or just anything like so it's really nice to just have a community around you to like just ask the big sis or ask your sis like hey like are you going through this because that's actually what we've all been doing like you going through this too but how are you dealing with that how am I dealing with that how do we like fix that you know like it seems like it's a common problem for all of us like how do we you know, mitigate that problem, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, like, just to even realize that we're not alone, yeah. that helps, you know? Like, even as just women navigating through a male-dominated industry, it's just nice to have, like, my sis right here with me, yeah. you know? So, like, I think that's very important. And what I've been doing with that, honestly, like, it wasn't a matter of, like, 
I don't call it anything. Like, um, I don't call it anything. It has no name, no title, because I don't want to really, like, capitalize. Like, I really just wanted to be like, hey, sis, I see you. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I see you doing your thing. Here's some recognition. Like, I want you to come over here, have some dinner. Shout out to Bang Loose and Double F for even just, like, believing in that vision and, like, yes. supporting it and supporting me and, like, just helping me, like, with that, th that entire process because it's, like... You know, sometimes we just want to relax. Like, we're always, yeah. like, the life of the party, you know? Like, we're always having to figure out a playlist or whatever. So I'm like, here's a place where you're getting some food, some yeah. drink, and we're just kicking it. You know, my favorite um, the events that we did was, like, DJ Disney Day, and we all just went to Disneyland. Yeah. I feel like kids. When we went to the bar in there, they had, like, the little DJ. Like, it was an actual robot DJ. I think it was, like, from Star Wars. Uh -huh. And it was a DJ in there. And then, like, they did a moment. They stopped everything. They was like, oh, I'm DJ so-and-so, whatever. Like, the little robot. Oh. I was like, oh, my God. Do y'all know it's a bunch of DJs in here? <laughs> so all the DJs was like, hey. So that That's was really so cool. Cute. And then we had, like, a yacht party in December. So it was just, like, really nice just to be able to, like, let the ladies have fun. Yeah. You know, just relax. Don't worry about having a playlist. Don't worry about, like, anything. You know, just yeah. pull up. Up, kick it with us. That's it. So That's really dope. Build the camaraderie, you know? That's really dope. Mm -hmm. Now, as you, I've interviewed you years ago. Now, you've definitely flourished and, you know, just <laughs> gone off. Now, as you navigate through the DJ world as a woman, like, how has it been for you as you level up each level? Is it a little bit more difficult or what? Um, I, I feel like, yeah, it's not going to say it's more difficult. I just feel like it's always going to be problems no matter where you at. Like, it's, it's just a matter of how you deal with it. You yeah. know, and it's that attitude on how you approach things, you know, because um, it's always going to be a problem. Like, more money, more problems. It's always yeah. going to be like that. You know what I'm saying? So um, I will say there's defi definitely different challenges. Um, I wouldn't say anything's harder than the next. It may be. I don't know. Especially, like, being a DJ in L.A. I yeah. think that actually is more, I don't want to say problematic, but it's just a little more difficult to maintain your real life versus, like, all the opportunities are here, yeah, but you still have real life to deal with, yeah. you know? Like, the cost of living out here is insane. Um, so even just, like, to, to be successful in L.A., period, is congrats. Like, do yeah. your thug this, you feel me? And, like, just, just understand, like, that's already a, a feat in itself. So, yeah. you know, like, yes, it's going to be problems everywhere. So that's one thing that you're never going to get rid of. Like, look at Beyonce. Like, she's huge, you feel me? But like she said, like, I think she said, like, what her country, I don't even want to call it a country album. She even said it's a Beyonce album, not yeah. a country album. But it stemmed from her act two stemmed from her be feeling like she wasn't welcome in that yeah. space, in the country space yeah. in 2016 when she did the Country Music Awards mm -hmm. performing Daddy Lessons. And I'm just like, okay, cool. Like, so even she has problems no matter where she goes, and she's Beyonce. Yeah. So it's like, no matter who you are, you're going to run into these problems, no matter how you deal with it. Look at how she dealt with it. Exactly. You know? Okay, period. Mm -hmm. Now, from a DJ perspective, mm -hmm. what are some things artists <laughs> in general <laughs> need to work on or improve on because you always I see you tweeting about things that you observe when you're at shows or at yeah. festivals yeah you know from a DJ perspective what can artists work on or you know to make the audience you know enjoy the show more um I have so many opinions on this <laughs> um I actually recently tweeted I think some artists need a little bit of uh, media training yes wholeheartedly <laughs> like I really think that like just like work on the work on like how you're talking to people Working on, work on like your interviews and stuff like that. Like I think likability is definitely very important, um, especially in 2024. Like yeah, we're looking at you, we like your music, but obviously like it's hard to like separate that life and that music thing. Like look at R. Kelly. Like you know what I'm saying? Like all the, those problems. Like work on your stuff, babe. Yeah. Um, not only that though. Like my personal thing when it comes to artists, like I like to, if I'm paying to come see you, I want to see a show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't come out there and you're not even rapping over your vocals. Like I already have an issue with artists rapping over their vocals or singing over their vocals like from the actual track. Yeah. Um, but not only that, sometimes they're not even fucking rapping. Yeah. I'm they're just, just like, bro, what the what? <laughs> what the hell? Like, oh here sing. Or here, here's the mic, whatever. I'm just gonna smoke and walk up back and forth on the thing. Or they all have all their homies rapping the lyrics. I'm just like, bro, I'm here to see you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like I don't want to pay money. Why are people paying? I'm, I'm not going to pay money to come see you yeah. at the end of the day. But, like, I feel bad for your fans because yeah. why are they paying this amount of money to come see you press play on an MP3? That's it. Like, I could have did this at home. That shit pisses me off. I'm not going to I didn't want to say his name because, listen, he hit up Kai Sinat because Kai Sinat, his pants said his uh, Yeezy pants was too big. 
And Kanye dead ass DM him and says, don't talk shit about my yeah. dad. I'm like, bro, all he said was your shit too big. That's why I'm trying to be careful on who I say. I love you, Kanye, but baby. Baby. <laughs> that shit, like, and to be real, like, and that wasn't even all the way on him. Even though he didn't even really rap too much that day, I didn't even get to see him like that at Rolling Loud because the lines at Rolling Loud were insane to even get there. there I already had my wristbands because yeah. I had to, I was working, but... My homegirl's like, she had to get her VIP stuff from Will Call. The Will Call lines are insane. Like, there's no organization, security. I'm just like, bro, the show, we can't even see shit. Yeah. Because, like, all this is over here, and so many people were pissed off. And I'm just like, yeah, it's not even just the artist, but just everything. Like, it's a, if it's a performance, if it's a performance happening, y'all need to make this shit, like, as just wonderful as possible because people are really paying to come see y'all, paying to come see these shows, paying to come to these events. And it's just like, eventually I'm not gonna fuck with y'all no more. Yeah. And it's just gonna start falling off. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, now you have a residency every Friday. Mm -hmm. Would you ever think about branching out of like California? Yeah, yeah, I, I would. Um, I'm an LA girl like through and through. Yeah, That's yeah. one thing. That's actually something I'm going through right now. <laughs> um, my family wants me to move to Texas. My family lives in Texas. Um, they want me to move there, and I'm just like, y'all, like, the opportunity in L.A. is, yeah. is, is, is there, you feel me? Like, L.A. is the entertain entertainment capital of the world, in my opinion, so it's just like, why would I leave this if I'm already here, you know? And so, like, I feel like I would branch out, but it's more so I'm coming back. Yeah. Eventually, I'll move somewhere else. Like, I went to Paris last, uh, last summer, and I was like, oh, shit, like... This and then seeing the black people there, they look like they went to Inglewood High School type shit. And yeah. then they open their mouth, and I'm like, oh shit, you really from here? So I was like, damn, like, so there's so much culture outside of LA. So I'm like, damn, that is something I might wanna, like, you know, tap into. Like, um, Victor Duplay, who is Jazzy Jeff's little homie, like, mm -hmm. he branched out and did a lot of international DJing. So even just like talking to him right now, he's like, it's actually really nice. Like, just seeing the other cultures and connecting with them and stuff like that. So I would consider it more of, more on like an international yeah. level instead of it being like domestic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would consider it. But LA, is, come on. That's where it's at. That's where it's at. Okay, now every Friday, right? Every Friday at the room, Hollywood, boom, real quick, pop, you know. Pop, pop out on our girl Chris of the DJ. Okay, through. if we can't make it every Friday, she's at almost every lit event in LA. <laughs> okay, Crystal is there. I'll be okay. there, you know. She did the VIP lounge at Rolling Loud. Yeah, that was actually really cool. I'm glad my set time was earlier because I feel like, matter of fact, I'm going to give a key or, or a tip to DJs. Like, if you can, get the earlier set times for festivals. If it's not like a, like a main stage set, if it's like a VIP lounge or something like that, get the earlier set because people going to come rock with you first and then they're going to see their favorite artists. Their artists are going to be pouring later. Yeah. So all the people are no longer going to be in your section. They're going to be with them. So it's yeah. like, you know, like the fact that I got to DJ a little earlier earlier meant that everybody was with me and then um I was able to go watch everybody yeah, else perform, yeah, you know? Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Now do you have any tips on DJ because I know there's like a lot of Discord on like if a DJ comes before you make sure to oh play God, not play yeah. a song before the set or like make sure your set is completely different. Do you have any tips about that? Um do you Simple. Like, I will say, don't burn out the DJ after you, though. Like, it's obvious. Like, if it's freaking the start, the party starts at 9 o'clock, you're the first DJ, why the hell are you playing the most lit song at 9 o'clock? Nobody's here, you feel me, and you're burning the other DJ out. One thing I don't like is when, like, the DJ, and this is for, just for me watching, um, when a DJ be low-key, like, I don't want to say trash, but just is just not doing it. And then the last 10 minutes, because they saw the next DJ coming, yeah. that last 10 minutes, they go in. Yeah. I'm like, where the hell was this energy the whole time? Yeah. Keep that energy. Like, keep that energy up. You feel me? Like, I don't care if it's one people, in, one person in here or a thousand people in here. Keep that energy no matter freaking what. I used to DJ in the strip club. Sometimes it was empty as hell. Other times it was packed. So it's like, that actually trained me to be able to DJ to no matter how many people was in the yeah. room. You know, like, um, as far as like, like, like the no playlists, I don't be liking those, but sometimes it's necessary. Like, yeah. I can't say a, the specific artist because I was definitely told don't fucking even, like, this list can't even go out on the internet because it'll cause more tr like, tr trouble in the streets. Like, it's street shit. Street yeah. politics and stuff like that. But, like, I did a show, and they gave me a list of people that I could not play whatsoever. And it was serious. Oh, and wow. I was like, okay, I got you. I still rocked it out, of course, yeah. but it's still very much, like, Damn, there's no playlist. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, that's like, crazy. I would have played that on a normal, yeah. on a normal tip, but like, nah. But like, when it's DJs doing that, 
Respect it. Like, especially yeah. if it's, like, an OG, like, yeah. like, say Jazzy Jeff. Not that he's going to do it, but, like, if Jazzy Jeff says, hey, like, I'm going to play this during my set, can you, like, not play this for me? Respect it, you know? Like, yeah. at the end of the day, your crate should be deep. You feel me? Like, that should challenge you to dig deeper into your crates. Like, and, like, if you can't do it, that's on you, babe. Like, you feel me? So, like, do your research. You should be able to, like, play whatever the fuck you want to play, yeah? But also, if they ask you that, then figure it. That's a challenge for you. Yeah. It makes you, like you know, better as a DJ. So yeah. I just feel like, yeah, like, yeah, don't burn people out, but also whatever. Do you? Okay, period. Well, I'm very proud of you, Crystal. Thank I, like, you. love to see you outside glowing and being beautiful. Thank you. I'm really happy for you. I'm proud of you, too. You know your things is. Okay, middle school game. Like, <laughs> okay, we did that right. Oh, my God. What was our, what was our mascot? Girl, I don't even know. I don't know. What is a, a it was boat? like a mariner or something. Boat? It was something. Like, it was something. It was something. <laughs> it's giving clippers. It's giving clippers. Like clippers mascot. Well, it's a bird, but like the clipper, a clipper is a boat. Yeah, I, I didn't yeah, know that. I seen in the new logo. Oh, new it. logo. It's oh, not it. that great, but that's a, that's my issue with them right now. We can talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. But if y'all don't know who Crystal the DJ is, please tap in with her. <laughs> she is popping. Okay, she Thank is you. LA. She she's a force <laughs> to be reckoned with, and y'all need to. Rock with that force. Thank you. Okay, but I'm about to test your skills in this game time. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and then we'll be right back with game time, okay? On my birthday in 2019, I decided to try something new and different each month for an entire year to force me out of my comfort zone and to embrace change in a fun and exciting way. 12 New Things is now a lifestyle of self-renewal and evolution. Post-COVID-19 pandemic, I wanted to reflect on some of my favorite new things and share my inspiration and what I learned. 12 new things. Hey, welcome back y'all and it's game time. Now this time is specifically created for Women's History Month. Okay, it's called Riddle Me That and she's gonna guess which female rapper it is based off the riddle. It's six of them, so you okay, ready Crystal, okay. you ready? All I'm, right, number I'm one. Nervous. In the rap game, she's an icon, bold with rhymes so fierce. Her stories told from Brooklyn streets, her fame unfolds. Which cream bee's legacy never grows old? You made that up yourself? I ain't gonna tell my thing. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's giving AI. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot, I swear, you should, you should make a children's book or something like that. That's fine. Lil' Kim. Okay. <laughs> okay, number two. In hip hop's history, she's a shining light. Her rhyme's sharp, her flow so tight. From the golden era, she took flight. Which pioneering MC is she is just right? Mm. Oh, that one might be Queen a little hot. Mm -mm. MC light, MC oh. light. A shining light. You should, you know, that, that should have like clicked in my head. It's okay. It's I okay. just love Queen Latifah. Okay, I love her too. She's great. <laughs> Shout out to Queen Latifah. Number three. I'm not a toy, but I'm named like one. And in the world of rap, my rhymes are spun with attitude and style. I steal the show, and no, I ain't no hoe. Who the fuck is this? She's a, she's a West Coast legend. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to give you the answer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, wait, can I? Can I'm I, not I, a toy, but I'm named like who's one. Who's it? Oh, like Yo-Yo. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to call like, phone a friend or something like that. Phone a friend in the audience. Okay, number four. In the rap game, reign supreme, my lyrics fierce like a laser beam. From Miami's heat, I rose to fame, and they tell me I'm the baddest. Trina. And they get, well, yeah, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> number five. In a trio of talent, I found my place. My fiery spirit, hard to erase. With TLC, we sketch, we set That's the- fine. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Last one. I'm not Adam's partner, but a rapper's delight. <laughs> I just want to finish. Wait, that shit hard though. Like, what? You just made a, a book, for real, for real. That's fire. Okay, children's book coming soon. Children's book, children's book coming soon. <laughs> okay. Called okay. Rapper's Delight. You got, you got basically all of them except I just for one, MC right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry, five MC out of six. Light. I'm sorry, five out of six. Shout out to you. High five. That's an A, right? Okay. Let's do one more cheers for Women's History Month. Mine almost gone. She needs to sip hers a little more. Okay. I'm baby. It was good, y'all, though. Like, you're really good at this. I have to, I have to ask the question. I don't want to be stumbling <laughs> over the words. Okay. It's, this one's a, Get a her creeper. Get a little buzz. It's a creeper. But shout out to my girl, Crystal the DJ. She's out here doing her thing. Like I said, please tap in with her. Every Friday, she's doing a, a residency. 
okay? At the room. And she's at festival. She's at any party that you could think of in LA, <laughs> she might be there. And if she's not, it might not be lit, okay? <laughs> but it's Women's History Month, and I just want to give her her flowers. Chris is a Thank DJ. You. Shout out to her. Shout out to you. Thank you. Can I interview you? Give me the cards. <laughs> I have not been interviewed. Have you ever been interviewed? I have, but like not like from like, like a woman's perspective. Okay, I feel actually, like actually shout out to Naya Audible. She did interview me a couple years ago. Is it? See, see, now I'm about to turn this around because okay. I'm about to start asking her questions. <laughs> okay, but tap in with Crystal Diddy J. This is Tyler Kimani, and we got a live performance from my girl T Spokes. Like I said, it's for the ladies. She about to come and kill it. So check it out. I go by the name of T Spokes. Shout out to Tyler for having me today. We're here at Eargas make it's Women's History Month. So we about to show them what these bars is like, you feel me? By the way. Yeah, they can't even compete with me. Since the day I started out being on a different frequency. Y'all be showing out from time to time, I do it frequently. And don't sit at my table with you, can't afford to eat with me. A bitch gon' really need to have some bars to try to beef with me. Take your nigga spots to shit a game and find his key to me. Really ask yourself before you try and pass a beat to me. Cause I'ma eat you up and go and split the profits evenly. I've been in my bag so I can't give you what you need from me. And please don't forget to buy the way before you speak to me, bitch. Any false moves, it can rectify, tape it up, kill the whole scene, how to petrify, who next? Make them fall the line, like a electric slide, right hand, sweat it to the truth, cause I ain't never lie, hold on, always on the go, I'm a busybody, ready to eat, bitch, I'm guessing up, that's on anybody, tell them jump, niggas TGG, if they feeling froggy, hella woods, guessing out the room, they got me feeling groggy, ooh, these niggas water down, that's why they feeling soggy, stop playing, dragging in the whip, like a Ricky Bobby, too good, I do this shit for fun, like it's still a hobby, shit talking, and I'm still talking, like you finna stop, just folks. Nigga, it's on the flow by me. I've been outside every day. Use a homebody, self made, all propane. What's the cosigning? See the name, bitch, on big spokes. Use a nobody, nigga. Huh. Hey, guessing up, bitch, like a Ricky Bobby. Huh. Hey, hey, shit talking, and I'm still talking. Like you finna stop me. It's Sparks, by the way.